Thank you for joining us this evening for our uh, midweek moment. We hope that you've had a great Christmas with your family and friends. And we look forward to what God is going to do in the future. And as we do, we want to remember what he has done for us in the past. So we're going to sing this song, We Will Remember. Join along if you know it.
church family. Thank you for joining us for this midweek moment. Uh, I hope that you've had a, a good time with, with family, a good time celebrating Christmas. And uh, we're just grateful for this time to, to be together. Uh, if you would, join with me as we pray this evening. Father, thank you so much for how faithful you've been. Father, as the words of the song remind us, there's so much in how we've seen you act in our past that's an encouragement to us, that strengthens us as we look to what's ahead. And so I pray, Father, that tonight you would help us in that, help us to, to know how to, to look to the past, how to remember your faithfulness and draw strength from that as we look forward to where you're leading us. We trust you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as a, a new year is ahead for many people, this is kind of the time of year either leading up to or shortly after the new year uh, that a lot of folks will kind of stop and, and push pause and spend some time reflecting on uh, the year that we've just had and then kind of looking to what's ahead, looking at their goals um, or maybe just some of their plans or habits they're wanting to, to institute or, or kind of uh, revive in their lives. And uh, so that's something that e even I've been doing. Uh, earlier today, I was journaling and uh, just writing down some, some things that uh, over the last couple of weeks, actually, that uh, have been significant. Some things that I've seen God do, some answered prayers and just some ways that God's uh, shown his kindness um, for me, one thing, honestly, this was just uh, kind of in leading up a couple weeks ago uh, now to our, uh, our drive-through nativity. Uh, on uh, just kind of the preparation part of that, there, there was a time on that Sunday afternoon I was building a sign, and uh, building's not really my forte, um, but I was you know, putting things together, and it occurred to me as I was kind of putting together this sign, I realized it wasn't going to be near strong enough to, to stand up to the wind. And I needed some extra wood, you know, some wooden braces kind of to, to go in to support uh, the main part of the sign. And I didn't have any wood, and I didn't have a saw that was going to be able to cut the wood at that, at that angle. And uh, I just thought, man, Lord, I, I need some help. I don't have a whole lot of time to go run and get this done somewhere else. And so I, I went out to our shed and was just hoping I could find some scraps or something that would fit. And I found six pieces of wood cut at just the perfect angle that fit exactly my needs and the screws that were big enough to you know, get the job done it just was in a matter of about 10 minutes that went from a prayer to an answered prayer. And, you know, it may not sound like a, a big deal to you, but uh, for me, that was just one clear moment where I saw, man, the Lord answered what I needed. He provided what I needed in that moment. And I was just so grateful for that. And for many of us, if you go back and you start thinking about, you know, what, what you've been through over the last few months, this, what this year has looked like for you, uh, there are probably some moments that... Um, Maybe others wouldn't think of as particularly big, but for you, at that moment, that was a time where you experienced God's kindness in a way that just made you more aware of his activity in your, in your life. And that's important for us to remember. You know, one of the things that you see when you go through the scriptures is actually this idea of remembering is really important for us as followers of Christ. It's really important for God's people to spend time actively remembering how God's been at work in the past. That's a big deal to God. That's a big, big deal to our own spiritual growth. And so you see this throughout the scriptures. Uh, just for example, if you have your Bibles close by, you can go ahead and turn to Psalm 105. This is a psalm that recounts God's activity in rescuing Israel from slavery and then his promise to bring them into the promised land. And it goes through... Uh, and just kind of walks them through his activity there. And so let's start in, uh, we're going to just start in verse 1 where it says, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. 
Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Verse 5 says, remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. Here you see this idea of uh, this emphasis on looking back at how God has acted, the things he's done, the works that he's done, his miracles, the ways that he's answered prayer and provided and shown his kindness over and over again. That idea of remember is emphasized here. And then the rest of the psalm, as you work your way down, it calls forward one thing after another. It reminds them how the Israelites were enslaved, but God remembered his promise. And so he called down famine on the land. And then he, he uh, took uh, the people out. He, he rescued them through the miracles or through the, uh, the plagues and then brought them out of Egypt. He cared for them in their years of wandering. And ultimately, he brought them into the land that he promised. It goes through one by one and looks at all these things that God has done. And it emphasizes this is a really important thing for God's people to remember. And one of the reasons why the Psalms were captured were parents in the wider community would teach the children to recite or to sing these Psalms as a way of remembering who God is, but also remembering what He's done. You see, we see who God is. We see His character on display in the way that He has acted in our lives. And so that's why it's important for us to write down things or to go back and, and spend time reflecting on and remember, remembering the ways that God has been faithful, the ways that God has acted in our lives. And so that's important. But then if you go on Psalm 106, it's kind of like a partner to Psalm 105 because it also remembers the history of God's people, but it remembers it from a little different perspective. Uh, Psalm 105 is all about how God has acted in mighty ways, all the good things God has done. Psalm 106 kind of retraces that same history, but it highlights how God's people have turned away from God, how they've failed at various points, and how they've forgotten what he's done along the way. So Psalm 106, we're going to look starting in verse 7, where... The psalmist says, when our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles, to God's miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses. And by the sea, the Red Sea, they rebelled. Yet he saved them for his namesake to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea and dried it up. He led them through the depths as though a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe, from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed them. The waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. Then they believed his promises and sang his praise. So they didn't remember God's activity in their past. When they're already on the cusp of being rescued, they're there in the desert. The Egyptians are coming. They've forgotten how God's provided for them already. They're already upset. They're already saying we should have never left. We shouldn't have trusted Moses. We shouldn't have trusted this God he's talking about. They've forgotten all of that. And then God provides for them and rescues them anyway. And then they celebrate. And we would think, okay, that's good. They learned. Verse 13. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his plan to unfold. Later down in verse 21, he says, they forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt. You see, there's that, that tendency frequently for us to forget how God has been at work in our own lives. And you know, we, we can probably all relate to this. Maybe it's just because the things that are in front of us, you know, they capture more of our attention. We get focused so much on how we need help now, and we don't stop, you know, in the midst of that, we just feel the pressure to kind of focus our attention on that. We don't stop and think back on how God has, has answered prayers that big or maybe even bigger in our past. And so it's important for us as God's people to be disciplined in that, to, to force ourselves at times to go back and to remember 
how God has been faithful, how he has answered prayers, how he's provided for us, how he's led us through difficult times or you know, given us wisdom when we needed it, directed our steps, worked in ways we didn't see you know, coming about. It's important for us to spend those times intentionally going back and reflecting on that, remembering that, because that gives us strength, it gives us confidence in knowing that how God has been faithful in the past, we can trust He will be faithful to go with us in the future. And so as we are at the end of one year, and man, what a year it's been. For many of us, the, the easy thing maybe would be to kind of, you know, okay, let's slam the book on 2020. This has been a, you know, a year for the ages. Let's not remember it. Let's not go back. Let's move on to 2021. We've been saying that since about June. Let's just, you know, hit the, hit the fast forward on this one. Let's skip ahead. But while 2020 has probably been no one's banner year, as God's people, I bet if we go back and look, we can see a lot of ways that even in the midst of the crazy, God has been really good to us. We can look back and see that just even in the life of our church. You know, if you go back to March, April, when things are first shutting down, one of the things that not just our church, but, but really uh, almost all churches were fearful of is, I mean, how are we going to make it? You know, we, we've, never, we've never experienced anything like this. Are we going to have to be, you know, are we not going to make it financially? And God provided through his people, through your generosity, God's provided so that we're, we're ending in a good place. We look back and we could say, man, God's enabled us to adapt and to, you know, to, to serve in new ways. There's been a lot of things along the way this past year as a church where, you know, we're not really sure if this will work, but let's, let's try it. It's the best thing we can do right now. I mean, for the first time ever, we did an all virtual vacation Bible school. We'd never done that before. We'd never planned that before. There weren't a lot of resources for that. But we prayed, and our kids' ministry team adapted and sought the Lord's guidance, and, and it was done, and it ministered to a number of families, not just here in our church, but, but outside of that. There have been a lot of ways where we can look at in, as individuals, ways that God has met our needs, ways that he's provided Ways that he's provided through our church family, you know, ministering to one another, encouraging each other. There's ways that you can probably look back and see how God's provided wisdom for you and making decisions for your family. Ways that God has opened up new opportunities that you wouldn't have expected. Those are all worth remembering. Because as we go forward into the days ahead, you know, it's hard to imagine that 2021 will will be, you know, such a, a historical year as 2020 has been. But it won't be a perfect year either. There never will be. And whatever 2021 holds, whatever 2022 or any year after that holds, what we can do and what we must do as followers of Christ is look back and see how God has been faithful, how God has answered, how God has been at work in 2020. Look at how God has given us what we've needed. Look at how God has brought us through. Look at how God has provided for us and given us wisdom. We've seen his kindness. We've seen his faithfulness. That should inform how we face the years ahead. And so, church family, I want to encourage us. You've got a couple of days to the new year. Take 20 minutes 30 minutes and just think about how have you seen God at work in your life this year? What is it that you want to remember about God's activity in your life in 2020? How has God provided for you? It may have been times when even it wasn't a specific prayer you were asking for. It may have been even kind of a dark time for you spiritually and yet God still showed his kindness to you. God still demonstrated his love to you in clear ways. But take about 20, 30 minutes and highlight what are those things you want to remember that you want to pass on to friends and family 
about how you've seen God's kindness so that you can look ahead to the God who is going to lead us into the future, who will be with us, and how we can let our past inform our faith as we walk forward with him. And so, church family, let me encourage you to do that. Let's be people who remember what God has done. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much for all these ways that you've provided for us. And we're really aware, God, that our memories uh, are short. If there's 365 days in a year, then there's every bit of 365 ways that we've experienced your provision. But help us even just remember 10, 12. Help us remember a handful of key ways that we've seen your kindness, that we've seen your goodness, that we've seen you at work in us, meeting us where we are, meeting our needs, rescuing us at times when we were desperately crying out for it. God, help us not to forget how good you've been. And as we remember, Father, help us to be strengthened by that. Please grow our faith so that we can step forward knowing whatever tomorrow holds, you're going to be there with us. Whatever it is that we face, we're not facing it alone. Whatever challenges are before us, you're faithful to provide what we need. And as your people, we have the promise of you going with us, empowering us to carry out your work in the world. So, Father, show us how to do that. Show us how to remember so that we can walk forward in faith. We pray these things in Jesus' name.